Most gamers are obsessed about getting an Xbox Series X, when in reality, they don't need one. After spending almost a year of my life chasing Xbox Series X stock, I finally got one and the experience did not power my dreams. Don't get me wrong, the Xbox Series X is not a bad console. In fact, it is very impressive. But as I recently reviewed the cheaper Xbox Series S, that tiny console blew me away and the step up to the Series X was not as significant as I had imagined. Unless you have a high-end 4K HDR TV with HDMI 2.0, one support for 4K 120, such as the LG CX OLED that I used for testing in this video, there is genuinely no point in you spending extra on the Xbox Series X, as your display is going to be the bottleneck within your setup. And I think this is an area that not many people seem to consider. Yes, the Xbox Series X is the superior console, but when connected to a 1080p TV, it's the same experience as the Series S. The Xbox Series X is a native 4K gaming console and visually looks incredible. Titles such as Forza Horizon 4 run at native 4K 60 frames per second and show the power and potential of the Series X, showing a lot of promise for upcoming games released later into this generation cycle, when developers begin to understand how to leverage even more power from this console. In contrast, the Xbox Series S is a 1440p gaming console, also known as 2K, and it upscales to 4K. From a casual viewing distance on a living room sofa, it is still very sharp and high quality for most games, but visually demanding titles like Forza do begin to highlight the difference between the two consoles as the Series S runs Forza at 1080p 60 frames per second. Unboxing the Series X was an incredible moment that I had anticipated for many months since its release. Inside the box you get a high-speed HDMI 2.1 cable, a power lead and a slightly improved Xbox controller with the new share button, D-pad, headphone jack and improved bumpers and triggers with the embossed texture that feels great. The 4K Blu-ray disc drive is a relief to see, especially after reviewing the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition and Xbox Series S. Although very rarely used by me in a modern world, it provides control over the prices you pay for games and where you buy them from, letting you get more games for your money and also the ability to sell them once completed. Another noticeable area of the Series X is the additional storage. The Xbox Series S only has a tiny 512GB SSD, but after the operating system, only 364GB is usable. This means you're lucky to install between 4 to 5 games, but with the Series X, there is a 1TB SSD and the extra space gave me more freedom, encouraging me to download more games from Xbox Game Pass that I traditionally would not have tried if space was tight. There is also the additional 1TB Seagate expansion card, which is pricey and costs almost as much as a Series S console. I recently picked one of these up. The card is a very cool idea and reminds me of my brother's PS2 memory cards from when we were kids. I will be doing a full video detailing the storage options for both the new Xboxes, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. In terms of the gameplay, the overall experience is kind of faultless. Only a few years ago to play a game at even 4K 30 frames per second, you would spend thousands and thousands of pounds on a crazy gaming PC. But you can now outperform those systems for just 449 pounds. With this perspective, what is there to complain about? Using Jedi Fallen Order as an example, this game runs at 4K 30 frames per second in visual priority mode and looks the equivalent to PC ultra settings from my time playing this title on my gaming PC. If 30 FPS is not enough for you, you can reduce the resolution and get a solid 60 frames per second in performance performance mode. It's great to see that console gamers are now getting the control over the gameplay experience, regardless of whether it's 4K 30, 4K 60 or even 4K 120, to achieve the demanding task of 4K gaming with high visual settings is a huge achievement at this price point. I believe that the Xbox Series X is the better console to buy for future proofing your investment. There is no doubt that towards the end of this console generation cycle, the Xbox Series X will progressively begin to get further ahead of the Series S, but for that fact alone, this is not a reason to get the Xbox Series X, as just like with the Xbox One X, we will probably see a mid-generation refresh for both consoles. If you're tired of waiting for a Series X, then don't. Get a Series S and stop wasting time. Just start playing games and having fun. That next-gen console is much better than you think and it's actually in stock and at a fair price. If you want to see my Xbox Series S review, check out this video next.